Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Mr. Gene Herschel in Hans Christian Andersen's The Wild Swans on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we are privileged indeed for we shall not only tell a story that has endeared itself to generations, but we shall present it in the words and voice of the man best suited by reason of his own endearing qualities to pass that pleasure on to you. For this is the treat we have, a tale by Hans Andersen told by Jean Herschelt. Hans Andersen we all know as the Danish writer whose stories have entranced countless millions of readers of all ages. And Jean Herschelt we all know as a great American who doesn't mind in the least being called a great Dane. But there's more to it than this. Mr. Herschelt translated these tales of Anderson from Danish to English, and I personally am very proud of the two volumes he presented me with some years ago. Mr. Herschelt's labor of love took some 10 years, and is not only the latest translation of Hans Anderson, but is also the only complete one ever made. The story Jean will tell us is that very beautiful one the wild swans. And now, Frank Goss, isn't it your turn to say something? For a Christmas greeting your friends will long remember, make your selections now from the complete Hallmark collection on display at the friendly store where you buy Hallmark cards. Whatever your taste, whatever your budget, you'll take special pride in sending Hallmark cards. And on the back of every one is the identifying Hallmark that says, you cared enough to send the very best. <laughs> Hallmark Playhouse, starring Jean Herschelt in Hans Christian Andersen's The Wild Swans. Once upon a time, far, far away, where the swallows fly when we have winter, there lived a king who had 11 sons and one daughter, Elisa. They were all greatly loved and they were very happy until one day, many years after the mother's death, their father married a wicked queen who did not treat his poor children at all well. She sent little Elisa to live in the country with some peasants. And before long, she made the king believe so many falsehoods about the princess that he took no further interest in them. And so one night, while the princess were asleep, the queen stole into their bedroom. She walked from bed to bed with a small vial in her hand. One drop on each of their foreheads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So the queen transformed the princess into 11 magnificent swans. It was so early in the morning that the sister Elisa was still asleep when they flew over the peasant hut where she was staying. They hovered over the roof, crying loudly and craning their long necks and flapping their wings, but nobody saw them or heard them. And at last they were forced to fly on high up near the clouds and far away into the white world. Mm -hmm. 
And little Elisa grew up in the forest, lonely for her brothers and dreaming of the day when she could see them again. She was lovely. When the wind stirred the hedge roses outside the hut, it whispered to them, Who is prettier than you? And the roses always answered, Elisa. She was fairest of the fair. And as she grew, she was more and more the princess that every woman should like to be and every man should like to wear. And then, one day, a traveler from her father's palace brought word of the disappearance of her brothers and warned her that she must never return to the palace or the queen would surely kill her. And so she left the hut and the peasants who had been kind to her and started out into the world in search of her brothers. By day, by night she wandered. And the birds guided her by day and the fireflies by night. It is hard to say how long she'd been wandering when she met the old woman. Good morning. Good morning. You're a long way from home. Yes, a long way. Uh, sit down and rest a moment. <sighs> You'll not find those you seek at this hour. You know whom I'm seeking. Have you seen 11 princes riding through the forest? No. But yesterday I saw 11 swans, all wearing golden crowns. They were swimming in a river not far from the sea. Eleven swans. You've come a long and weary way. Have you still faith that you will find those that you seek? Yes, I'll find them. And I'll help them. I don't know how, but some way I'll find them and I'll help them. Then come with me. And I'll guide you to the river that will lead you to the sea. <laughs> And so Elisa came to the sea. And just at sunset, she held up her arms to the sky. And like a white ribbon unrolling in the air, 11 white swans with gold crowns on their heads flew towards her. And as the sun yawned and pulled the sea up over his head, the swans threw off their feathers. And there were the 11 brothers she had searched the land to find. Oh, Elisa, Elisa, we've talked constantly of what it would mean to see you again, to have our arms around you and to hear your voice. I've been so lonely for all of you. I didn't even know you weren't at the palace until a few weeks ago. Every day we are forced to fly about disguised as wild swans. But at night when the sun goes down, we take back our human form. The moment the sun goes down? The very moment. And so at sunset we must always look about us for some sort of firm foothold. Because if we were flying at sunset, we would be dashed down to the earth immediately. Do you live here? No, we live on the other side of the sea. On the other side? Yes, it's, it's beautiful country, Elisa. Just as beautiful as this. But we must cross the ocean to reach it. You see, we're allowed to come here to our homeland only once a year. And we can only stay 11 days. It's our great sorrow and yet our only source of happiness to come here. When do you return? In the morning. I'll go with you. How can we take you? We have neither ship nor boat. We can carry her. Look, I can lift her with one arm. Surely the wings of all of us should be strong enough to carry her across the sea. It's a long and dangerous way, Elisa. I'm not afraid. Oh, please, please take me with you. They spent the entire night making a net of climbed willow bark and tough rushes. When it was finished, Elisa lay down upon it and went to sleep. And when the sun rose and her brothers again became swans, they lifted the net in their bills and flew high up toward the clouds with it. That night, Elisa found herself in a strange land on the other side of the ocean, in front of the large cave that was the home of her brothers. After they had eaten, they led her to the nook where she was to sleep. I've had many a wonderful dream on that bed, Elisa. 
We'll see what you dream of there tonight. I only wish I could dream how to set you free. That's the prayer of my life now, to set you free. led me to the river. What are you doing here in my dream? You prayed for help. I've come to you in your dream to help you if I can. Do you see this stinging nettle in my hand? Many such nettles grow around the cave where you sleep. Only those and the ones that grow upon graves in the churchyard may be used. Remember that. Crush the nettles with your feet, and you will have flax, which you must spin and weave into eleven shirts of mail. Once you throw these over the eleven wild swans, the spell over them will be broken. But keep this well in mind. From the moment you undertake this task, you must not speak. You say will strike your brother's hearts like a deadly knife. Their lives are at the mercy of your tongue. I'll do exactly as you've told me. Exactly as you've told me. Exactly as you've told me. <laughs> The old woman touched Elisa's hand with nettles that burned like fire and awakened her. It was broad daylight, and close at hand, where she had been asleep, grew a nettle like those of which she had dreamed. She started to work immediately. Great blisters rose on her hands and arms, but she endured them gladly. She crushed each nettle with her bare feet and spun the green flax. She finished one shirt and set to work on the second one. And then, suddenly, cutting across the hot afternoon, she heard the sound of a hunting horn on the mountainside, and dogs coming closer and closer. She made a bundle of the nettles she had gathered and ran into the cave with it. A moment later, she heard the dogs and the voices of people just outside, and several huntsmen came into the cave, and one of them was the tall, handsome king of the land. He stood for a long time looking down at Elisa. Hello. The king smiled down at her, waiting for her to say something. She was the most beautiful girl he had ever seen. Elisa stared at him wordlessly. Who are you? What are you doing here? Elisa shook her head. Her brothers the lived once and their lives depended on her silence. The young king held out his hands to her. If you're as good as you are fair, I'll put a golden crown upon your head and give you my finest palace to live in. Come. The young king picked Elisa up in his arms. She tried to fight him off with the bundles of nettles, but it was no use. He carried her out and mounted his horse with her in his arms. Great silent tears still falling from her eyes, but not one sob escaped her. Not one sound. My dear, don't you realize? No harm is going to come to you. I only want to make you happy. You're not my prisoner. I am yours. The king rode off down the mountain with Elisa in his arms and all his huntsmen galloping behind him. And at sundown, they rode into his splendid city. This is my kingdom, and now it's yours. But Elisa's heart, 
had raced back to the cave on the mountainside, and her anxious eyes were searching the heavens until her brothers could ride into their own kingdom. There could be no kingdom for her. moment, James Hilton will return to introduce the second act of Hans Andersen's Wild Swan, starring Jean Hersholt. But first, wouldn't you like to have several boxes of assorted Christmas cards to have on hand for filling out your lists and to take care of last-minute additions? You'll find a complete array of Hallmark boxed selections to choose from at the friendly store where you buy your Hallmark cards. And just because they are Hallmark cards doesn't need, uh, mean that they have to be expensive. For example... For only 50 cents, there's a box titled Christmas in the Country with 12 colorful Christmas winter scenes that would delight anyone. Then there is the Hallmark Family Box that contains 22 different Christmas cards for only $1. And there's a special box for the kiddies, so appealing they will want to keep a set themselves. Among the many other Hallmark box selections are old-time prints by Courier and Ives, colorful Christmas scenes painted by Norman Rockwell with the kindly understanding for which he is famous, Verses by Edgar A. Guest, America's favorite poet. Winter scenes that recapture childhood memories by Grandma Moses. And in the Grandma Moses collection, there's a large reproduction of one of the subjects for you to frame and keep. And remember, when your friends receive these fine cards and look on the back, as you did, they'll see the hallmark and know you cared enough to send the very best. Now we continue with part two of Hans Andersen's The Wild Swans, starring Jean Hersholt. The king led Elisa into his palace, and he had his handmaidens deck on satins and laces. He put jewels before her and all the treasures of his kingdom. Nothing could make her eyes sparkle or her lips smile. And then, finally, the young king led her to a small room adjoining her bedroom. On the floor lay the bundle of flax he had spun from the nettles, and from the ceiling hung the shirt that she had already finished. When Elisa saw them, hope rose up joyously inside her, and she smiled. And then she went down on her knees and kissed the king's hand. He lifted her to her feet gently. My dearest, my darling, you're all I ever hoped to find on earth or dreamed to find in heaven. Will you take my name and my heart and my kingdom? The king held out his arms to her, and Elisa looked into his eyes and saw a shining future. And so she put her hand in his, and that was her promise. Wedding bells rang for days and days and made the glory of the air. And eleven white swans flew over the city, their wings outstretched in benediction. And so it was that Elisa endured the physical pain of the nettles and the flax and the mental anguish of loving and not being able to speak of her love. Night after night, when the king slept, she stole away to that small room. And if he noticed that her hands were blistered and raw each morning, he never asked for an explanation. Night after night, she worked. And to her, the burning nettles had the silken softness of feathers of swans. At last, one night, when she was at work on the seventh shirt, she saw that there was not enough flax left to finish it. And she remembered the words of the old woman. Do you see this stinging nettle in my hand? Many 
say such nettles grow around the cave where you sleep. Only those and the ones that grow upon graves in the churchyard may be used. She wrapped a shawl about her and went out alone. Alone through the dark shadow of the palace. Alone through the frightening blackness of the gardens. Were those footsteps following her? Or was it only the wind? She didn't dare pose to look back. Alone through the long, empty alleys. Alone through the deserted, threatening streets. Alone into the churchyard. Alone to the very edge of the graves to gather nettles. While the ghosts and the ghouls and the witches circled around her. Fast on, fast on, fast on, trying to snatch the living breath from her. She kept her eyes on her task, and she prayed as she worked. And at last, her back was full of the nettles. She rose then, and steadfastly faced the ghostly circle. They moved about her, faster, faster, in an ever-tightening ring. Her will as strong as her faith in God, she walked steadily towards them, and the terrible music clamored and dinned in her ears. But she walked through the circle. She walked through, and they fell back before her. She hurried home through the dawn. She had no idea that someone had been watching her that night. That even now, one of the king's trusted ministers was hurrying to tell him that his wife was a witch. And that she had been received by the witches and ghouls at their revels and been permitted to leave unharmed. I can't believe it. It is true, your majesty. I saw the queen leave the palace. I followed her to the edge of the churchyard. I saw her arrive and leave with my own eyes. So fair, so lovely, so good. Surely you must be mistaken. Look at her hand, your majesty. Ask your own heart the answer. True, her hands are often sore and bleeding. All witches' hands are like that. It's caused by the poisonous vapors and the potions they brew. Could, could a witch be as beautiful as she is? A powerful witch may create almost any illusion. You know that, your majesty. But the punishment for witchcraft... Is, is death by fire. I'll not sentence her. Then the people must judge her and sentence her. It is the law. Let the people judge her if they like. I cannot do it. Let the people judge her, he said. And the people did judge her. They condemned her to die by fire. She was led from the royal halls to a dungeon. The jailer opened an iron door. In with you now. Let's see if you're witch enough to escape that fire in the morning. You'll have no silks and velvets down here. Use your bundle of nettles for a pillar. Use these coats of mail you've woven for your covers. Lisa went to work immediately. She was completely alone. But towards evening, she heard the rustle of a swan's wings outside her window. And she wept with joy to know that her brothers were close at hand. Her fingers flew, untying, unfaltering, as the night deepened and then began to fade. The next morning, when Elisa was to be burned as a witch, all the townspeople came flocking to see her. Her cheeks were deadly pale, and her lips moved in silent prayers as her fingers twisted the green flax. Ten shirts lay at her feet, and she worked away on the eleventh. Look at the witch mumbling. Why don't you take her filthy sorcery away from her? How do you know what revenge she's creating? Take her poison flax and tear it to bits. She may kill us all with Kill the witch! Kill the witch! Hasn't anyone the courage to take that flex from her hands? Look! Up there in the sky! Where? Eleven swans! It is a sign from heaven! She must be innocent! The eleven white swans flew down and made a ring around Elisa with her flapping wings. The mob drew back in terror. Only the executioner stepped between the swans toward Elisa. But... 
Before he could reach her, she hastily threw the eleventh church over the swans. Look at that. Now I may speak at last. I am innocent. I'm innocent. <laughs> She is innocent indeed, said her eldest brother. And he told them all that had happened. And while he spoke, the scent of roses filled the air. For every piece of wood that they had piled up to burn her was suddenly covered with red, fragrant roses. And at the very top, a single pure white flower shone like a star. The king cut it and put it in Elisa's hand. My queen, my wife. My darling, I loved you the first moment I saw you. And I will love you forever. And so the eleven princes went back to claim their kingdom. And the king picked up Elisa and rode back with her once again to the city. And all was joy and happiness and celebration. And as was the custom in those days, they lived happily ever after. James Hilton and Jean Hersholt will return. But first, may I invite you again to see the new Hallmark Christmas cards now on display at your friendly Hallmark dealers. If you prefer to select cards to fit each one on your list individually, you'll find a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. There are Hallmark albums from which to select cards for imprinting with your name. And there are the many boxes of assorted Hallmark cards. Yes, whatever your taste, whatever your budget... There are Hallmark cards you'll take special pride in sending. And when your friends receive them and look on the back, as you did, they'll see the Hallmark and know you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. It surely has been a great pleasure to have you with us tonight, Jean Hersholt, and I think all our listeners will agree that your presentation of that great story recaptured those wonderful moments of childhood that Hans Christian Andersen intended even for us grown-ups. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. It's a pleasure to be here and to work with you, Hallmark people. You see, I believe we have more than a little in common. Frankly, I get tremendous enjoyment from working with these stories for children, just as I'm sure that you folks at Hallmark must get a great deal of satisfaction from knowing that those wonderful dolls of the nations and your dolls from the land of make-believe give children so much fun and education. Yes, I believe we have both aiming at the same thing. A world of happy children. Thank you again, Mr. Hersholt. You're welcome any time. We have open house here every week. And our story next Thursday is adapted from the work of the great humorist Stephen Leacock. It's entitled, My Financial Career. It will be of special interest to everyone because it's a lesson in how to handle money. And we are particularly fortunate in having as our guest a man who has a deep love and a great respect for all matters monetary. That eminent authority on finance, Mr. Jack Benny. <laughs> so be sure to be with us on the Hallmark Playhouse next week for Jack Benny in My Financial Career. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Gene Herschel, who stars as Dr. Christian on the Vaseline program, is heard on CBS every Wednesday evening. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Don't miss next Thursday at the same time when James Hilton returns to present My Financial Career, starring Jack Benny. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>